so Dr. Paul, uh, could you tell us about some of the work you've come across in Goa about in short stories and novels? Okay, so um, I'll do with the, the novels first. Um, I think they're generally fairly well known. Yeah. Um, there's the novel Us Brahmins, the Brahmins by Francisco Luis Gomes. Um, which is a sort of, uh, there's a friend of mine who's finished his PhD in the Sorbonne only I about um, really? only about um, the, the Brahmins. And there's going to be a critical edition coming out in I France see. in French. He's preparing now. It's a, it's a very interesting novel. Who's he? What's his name? Uh, his name's Everton Machado. Okay, um, Brazilian. Brazilian. Um, yeah. Yeah, very interesting man. Uh, yeah, that's, that's an interesting novel. I mean, very much a, a romantic novel. Um, and at times, um, maybe a little... Uh, political? Or? Well, it, it's not so much the, politi the political aspect. I mean, sometimes I think it, it, it strays away from fiction. He yeah. tried to put too much in. He wasn't a natural literary. Well, he had a very literary style, but he wasn't naturally a literary writer. It was the only novel he produced. Um, there are other, other, other. Um, there's a sort of semi-novel called uh, Ujmaratej. Um, it's unfinished, I think. Why? Uh, I, uh, the name is escaping. Me. Okay. Um, the Marathas. The Marathas. Um, Leopold or something. That's what occurs. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, another Brazilian colleague of mine has, has, has found everything that was published. I see. So that's, that's, that's been sort of recuperated. Um, then there's quite a big break in, in terms of novel writing. Um, it's very difficult to... And, and again, I think this is why the, the comparison with Cape Verde is very interesting. In the, in, in, under the, the, the dictatorship, the Stud novel, there was very little writing in Portuguese. I see. In Goa. There was writing in... in in other fields, Goans are very productive in the time. Um, I read with interest the um, book that you, you've just published um, about um, Konkani Theatre. It seems that you know, Konkani Theatre was very productive during that time. But that's the Goans in Bombay largely, no? The is, that, is that largely in Bombay, yeah. but not, not yeah. here at all? Yeah. Okay, so that's, 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 a, that's, a slightly different, um, that's a slightly different situation there. But, um, yeah, uh, it's interesting thinking, you know, why was there this big hiatus? Why was there so little coming out? Uh, and of course, censorship and dictatorship is, a, is, a, is an important reason, um, you know, perhaps the, one of the principal reasons, but it's not enough to explain that, since in Cape Verde, that was the time of the great outpouring of Cape Verdean literature, especially the 30s, 40s and 50s, when it developed as a, as a, as a really developed as a, as, a, as a literature. So I think while, uh, I think quite often people say there was a dictatorship, nothing was written, as though one equaled the other. Um, while it was a hugely important factor, I think there are, there are other factors to be to be fed in that have to do with a particular situation of Goa. I'm not quite sure what they would, what they would be exactly. That's something I'm still thinking about. Um, then, in the 1960s, there are a couple of novels. Um, there's Usigno de Ida, The yeah. Sign of Wrath or Anger, by, uh, by Orlando Lukács. Yeah. That's, I think, fairly well known in, in Goa. Right, it's right, it's right, quite, right. quite often anthologized. Orlando has stuff. been keeping touch with Goa. I even happened to meet him and, you know... He's passed away. Now. Before he passed away, He's yeah. Passed away but he used to come down and that was a difference, you know, and... I think maybe that's true. He was very... Um, he was very connected to Goa. Yeah, and um, his, his uh, anti-colonial politics also fitted in with Goa. Yes, I think the, the fact here, that you know, it is an anti-colonial novel. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, ideologically also. Ideologically makes yeah, it easier yeah. to, to digest. Though but it was never translated then. Was it never tra really never translated? That's a shame. He's a, he's a, very, he's a very good writer. Um, and of course, he has another novel that came out in 2003, his last novel. Yeah. It was called um, Ultimo Yard de Manu Miranda. He the, told me about the last it. Gaze of Manu Miranda. It's a very interesting novel because it's it sort of encompasses his reflections on what he thinks Goa I see. was. Really? And this really? is it's mainly set in the fifties. Really? So in a sense it's going back to the period in which there wasn't any writing. He told me when he was writing about it that uh, you know this was coming up yeah. and Well I mean I have to say I hope that these books are, are translated into English or, or, or even Conkini or Maritime. It's worth it, definitely. And appear in, 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 in Goa in for Goa and readers. That's, right. I think that's very important. There's another novel that came out and um, 1960s. You have to you have to forgive my pronunciation. Is it Bodki? Bodki. So the um, the widow, the widow um, by Agostinho Fernandes. Okay. Which is um, I think it's uh, at the moment Oscar Noronha has a um, uh, an editing house here. He's he's preparing it to be published in Portuguese. I see. Um, it would be nice if there was an English translation. That's true. Again, um, it's it's not my favourite novel. Um, I think there are flaws in it, but it is interesting, and uh, especially the ending is. It ends on a real note, I won't ruin it for people, but it ends on a real note of ambiguity. I see. Which is, I, I always find, very, one of the most fascinating things in, in, in literature. Um, so that's more or less... Jip, Jip, uh, which is... Jip, 
Um, the Jekyll Beatles, I wouldn't call that a novel. Yeah. I was going to include that in the short stories. Um, it's not quite a novel, it's, it's sort of a, a collection of scenes. I it calls see. it scenes from Indian life. Um, it doesn't really have the plot of a novel, or the development of a novel, or the, the, the kind of thick description that we usually associate with novelistic writing. Um, I mean, he was criticised for that at the time, but I don't think he actually wanted to write a novel, so it's wrong to try to evaluate that work as a novel. I think, again, it appeared first in the press. I see. So it, was, it had that sort of episodic um, text, not episodic structure, that um, can sometimes be obscured a little when things are presented in book form. Um, there's a novel that came out recently by Leopold Mudiyaj called The Kazagran. This came out last year in Portugal. I see. Um, he's a, a go and who He's a historian and a journalist here in Goa that moved to Portugal, I think, in the late 70s. I see. Set, set in Goa in which years? Um, it's sort of set in Goa from just before, um, just before uh, liberation to... Uh, I've not read it to the end yet, I see. so I'm not quite sure where okay. it ends. Okay. But it, it, it's sort of half memoirs, half novel. I see. It's a sort of, auto, a, sort of a, a novelized autobiography. It's interesting. Um, it's worth reading. Um, what else is there? I think that's... I think covered all the novels. Um, there wasn't, like I said, there wasn't a huge amount of novelistic output because the market then was there. Yeah, yeah, and there were publishing houses were scarce in that sense. And publishing houses were scarce. Now, in terms of short stories, there is, as I said, there's there's a lot more, and I, I think the short stories are much more accomplished. Um, there are. You know, we mentioned Jib, and I, I, I wonder if the, 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 the rubric of short story is the best way of, of engaging with what he, he does, particularly in, in that in that in that book. In the 1920s, there's a very interesting writer who uh, I, uh, has, seems to have always, almost totally been forgotten, and is never discussed. Um, and I, this is something I've never quite understood. Why? I mean, Jip, I, I like. I think it's very funny. I think yeah. it's very good. But why does Jip's name always come up? And, and um, Joao de Silva Coelho is the name of this writer. Nice. His name never comes up. And he wrote about 200 stories. Nice. Um, he gives a whole fresco of. of Go and society from the 1920s, um, from rich to poor, to Hindus to Christians, from um, you know, the, the, the main towns of the old conquests I to see. his experiences as a notary. He lived in Bishwari in, in, in the interior, oh. so his, his experiences and knowledge of the, of the Hindu, of Hindu society. I, mean, I think one thing that may have militated against him being well known at the time, in the 1920s, there was a big craze for his, his, his stories. They, they caused uproar because he made fun of everybody. I see. So in the same way that Jip um, managed to annoy almost everybody in Goa, I, see. Um, I think you know, as well, as sort of tried to outdo him and really <laughs> alienate every single person I see. in Goa. But um, yeah, his, his story is wonderful. Short, it's very short. Um, quite often moving from um, a short story narrative to some kind of barb against the people that were alive at that time. I see. And uh, I'm not a historian, and I, my knowledge of the ins and outs of that period is, is, is fairly limited. So. Um, I, I can sort of tell that he's aiming these 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 digs at, 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 at the personalities of the time, but yeah. I, I'm not quite sure who he was who he's talking about. But he's a very interesting writer. Then later in the 19, uh, 1940s and 50s, we have um, a writer called um, Menezes Rodrigues, Alberto de Menezes Rodrigues, who is not very good but interesting in the way he's not very good. Um, there's also a writer called Ananta Rao Sardesai. He was, a, as the name suggests, a, 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 name states, a, a Hindu writer. He wrote short stories and, and radio plays. He was one of the, at least in Portuguese, one of the, um, the, the say, let's say, the fathers of the radio play. And, I see. and his, stories are, his stories are interesting. I his stories are interesting. Um, they were, in the 1970s, they were supposed to publish an anthology of his stories in Portugal. Um, but... Uh, 1974, and the revolution happened, um, and they were lost. I see. Um, which is an enormous pity. Um, in my time here in Goa now, I've managed to recover about six or seven. There were about 30. I've got about six or seven now. So it's it's a good chunk, and it allows us to see um, you know, what his writing was like. Um, I see. You know, really using this colloquial Portuguese of Goa. I see. Um, it's very, very interesting, especially the radio play. So there's him. Um, then later in the 1960s, we have the writers I was discussing in my talk um, yesterday. So Bimala Devi, Mideo um, Slavrasha, and Epitasio um, Paesh. Then a little bit later, 
Um, mainly through this program, Luna Scienza, of All India Radio, we have um, a writer called Eduardo de Souza and another writer called Augusto do Rosario Rodrigues. Again, they're a bit different to the writers of the 60s, and a lot of their writing is much more retrospective. The writers of the 60s seem to be writing in the present about what was around them. And there are, they did have some historical stories, but these writers, I think, at the end of their lives, writing these stories for what would have been an increasingly aging public as a sort of a, a glance back at the world of their, of their youth. Not necessarily nostalgic, yeah, I mean, yeah, quite yeah, often yeah, critical, yeah. but um, I think as you grow older, you tend to, yes, you, you can tend to um, drift away from the here and now to a world of memories that you've um, Thanks. built up over your life. Thanks so much for all this interesting uh, download and here's wishing you all the best. Thank you very much. For a bright career in Pakistan.